call to order the regular board meeting of June 4th, 2019 at 7 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance tonight will be led by the Anchor Bay Junior ROTC. Please rise. Thank you to the Anchor Bay Junior ROTC and have a safe summer. Item three, roll call. Court, 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 please call the roll. Supervisor Ecovetti. Here. Treasurer Lafada. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Joseph. Here. Trustee Domingue. Here. Trustee Bosper. Here. Clerk Berry is here. All members are present. Item four, presentations. 4A, presentations by Public Works on ordinance amendments created in July of 2018. Assistant Director Johnson. Good evening, board. Um, I'm here this evening to present uh, some of the ordinance changes that were done as a part of the codification process that went underway uh, early in 2018 to be completed by July of 2018. And uh, upon recommendation of Christine Anderson from Seabird Nulowski, that we present some of our changes to you just so you're aware of what's going on before the whole ordinance book hits you uh, for you guys to vote on. Um, so just to make a quick, oh, sorry. Is your mic on? Your mic? Give it a tap. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Can you hear me okay. now? Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. So I, I attached a lot of the main components as a part of the presentation um, for you guys to review prior to this meeting uh, with the cover pages just kind of showing all the changes to the ordinances that we were recommended making, uh, with most of them being minor grammatical changes um, or changes to uh, basically remove the numerical portion of fees from the ordinance and then offer up a um, asking it to change by resolution to avoid having to constantly change ordinances on a regular basis. So I'm just going to run on the list of the ordinances that I had in the packet. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. If you want me to stop talking, please let me know. If you guys have thoroughly read them, please let me know. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Chapter 64-057, which was uh, building service sewers, drains, and connections. With that particular ordinance, all we did was just adjust the insurance levels to match the minimums that are supposed to be met at this time. And that was reviewed by John Gandolfi to make sure that that was correct. On the next ordinance on 64-081, which is connections to the water supply system, we just remove language that mentions that no meters larger than two inches will have a remote reading device on the meter, which is what we read our meters with driving by. We call it a radio read device as well. We put them on all meters if we can, not just certain sizes. So we change the language so that all meters will have a radio read device on them. Also in that uh, ordinance change, we added a paragraph, typically as a part of the sprinkling, we do an odd even sprinkling ban every year where addr addresses that end in odd numbers sprinkle on odd days and even numbers on even days. We just figured we throw in the ordinance since we're already doing that regularly anyway, we'll just make it a part of the ordinance. Um, and then we also change the language to allow uh, ball valves on meters smaller than two inches. Currently we just allow only gate valves which can have a tendency to have, um, right now. there's more components and have more issues where ball valves can be easier to maneuver and uh, can last longer. 
ordinance. Uh, the next ordinance we had changes on was 64-082, fire hydrant use. Um, so at the time, uh, the fire chief was not here, so I removed that language and just had it directed to the public safety director. So I removed the chief of fire department language. So if, I don't know if you guys would like that added back in. We can do so now that uh, Chief Miller is here. Uh, but at this time, I just removed it and had it directed to Public Safety Director Hurston. Um, any questions so far? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just uh, like to maybe suggest that we receive and uh, file the uh, proposed ordinance changes. There's a complete list mm -hmm. and maybe make it part of our uh, official minutes so that residents can see them prior to our uh, next board meeting because uh, sure. I mean I know you know ball valves and all yes. this but I don't know how enthused our audience is going to be to listen. To the pages. I understand. So, I understand. Uh, I would just make a motion to receive and file the uh, list which is fairly comprehensive. Support. Board. Motion to receive and file by Trustee Joseph. Support by Trustee Domingue. Discussion. Do you have anything that's urgently important that you really want to share before before we receive and file? And I'm sure the board will uh, reach out to you if something pops out to them. Um, not 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 extremely urgent. The only thing I would just say is we had we just updated 64-219, which is the table of capacity unit factors, and that was a part of this list. So we are going to remove that because we've already updated it currently to add dry manufacturing. So we're going to remove that chapter out of this entire process and not rehash it. And these will be back for official Yes, these will be back either for as a group or correct. 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 Motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Trustee Domingue. All, all those in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five, department reports. Director Coddington. Good evening, everyone. I just want to reiterate that the water levels in Lake St. Clair are still coming up. They probably came up four to six inches just in this last week alone. I'm urging everybody to please take action and protect your property. Uh, we do have sand available at uh, our DPW along with sand bags. We have sand available at the uh, behind our pump station and fire hall on Jefferson at 48475 Jefferson. We do have sand available also at Brandenburg Park up in the corner of the parking lot. <coughs> uh, we have sandbags. Um, they're, still, they're still thinking the water's gonna come up higher and we're getting critical in a lot of low areas and anybody that lives by the water knows that. So uh, we're doing everything we can to assist the county and everything and watching all the bad areas and, and we're gonna try to help as much as we can along the waterfront. Thank you. Any questions from the board for Director Coddington? Any further department reports? Director Sonnenberg, welcome. Good evening. I just have a few things. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize to some of our seniors. We had uh, um, we've been doing some air quality tests in the building, and we did an air quality test in the senior center, a follow-up test from various tests we've been doing. And that test, there was a three percent. Um, it showed a 3% content of the staph virus, which is, I apologize if I don't get this exactly correct, but staphy locus, which is, at that amount, it's, it's minimal, but if you have compromised respiratory systems, it could create other issues. So we decided to shut, shut the senior center down and do a complete thorough cleaning. So we've been going through that process, and we made the choice not to reopen it until that test is cleared. So that's the right reason why it's closed. I just felt like it was the best course of action. It's taken us a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I think it was the right thing to do just to be safe, just to show it didn't spread, just so we had no issues. So until we get that second test to show clear, which has just been taken, it takes a week to go through that process, then once we get a clear test, we'll go ahead and open up that part of the building. So I just wanted to let the seniors know that's why that building, part of the building's been closed. It's been thoroughly cleaned and we've taken more steps. We put in some air purifiers and other things to prevent that from happening again, and we will continue to test. What I was told from our experts, it could be as simple as someone was at the hospital, came into the building, brought it in, and it stayed. And they could have just caught it at the right time. So I just want to let you know we will be diligent in testing that moving forward and keep you updated on the progress. 
Director so that's Steinberg. Steinberg. We're gonna, I'm going to take some questions from the board Go on ahead. just that one before you move on to the next one. Questions on the senior senator, to Director Sonnenberg, Trustee Vosper. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, giving us that report. You said you're looking for a clear, till the air is clear, do you mean 0% or just a lesser amount? Yeah, we just want to show, there, there should that, that's not a virus that should be present in a test like that. So normally you would have no presence. Like we took, let's say, seven samples throughout the building. None of the other areas showed you know, an absolute zero of that, except for the senior center. So you're correct. We're anticipating a zero test when we get it back. Okay, thank you. Clerk Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Josh, do you know when the senior center, can you estimate when the senior center will be available for full utilization? We're hoping by the end of the week. The problem with these type of tests is we expedited the test, but it takes a long time for that culture to germinate, and it, there's just a process, no matter how much you want it to get done and how much you're willing to pay to get that test done, there's a certain process they have to follow to get us the result. So it was about a week. We had it tested last week. We expected to get the results by Friday. And if we get the results clear, we should be able to occupy at that point. As soon as we get a clear test, we're going to open it up. And we're anticipating receiving that by the end of the week? That's, that's what they're telling us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The second thing is uh, I just want to speak real quick to the memorial in the back. We had a dedication um, over Memorial Weekend. The picture that I'm showing you now was uh, the picture from a couple years ago when we arrived. And um, I just, I want to show <coughs> the board, I want to thank the board. I came in with a request back in April for $15,000 to contribute to the site work, to the work that the uh, volunteers had already planned to do. So as you can see here, this is what we started with. This is the Memorial today. Um, we did add extras, and that's where our cost was. We added turf around the table. We added some additional electrical circuits. Um, you can see this is another shot from uh, aerial drone. We had a lot of participation. They, they estimated we had between five and 700 people on site for the dedication, which was tremendous. So this is the table that you'll see outside, and those plates represent each one of the soldiers that passed away. Uh, the turf that you can see was an ad that I asked for, so it was low maintenance. Moving forward, we don't have to put any fertilizer, we don't have to cut, it'll look good for a lifetime. So this shows the spend to date. I asked for 15000 We have about, I can email these too, I apologize, it's a little bit, it's a little bit small. But we got about $6,000 left. We still have a little bit of work to do. We're going to do some seeding and some drainage out there. So, and then we'll be just about done. And we're gonna add a little bit more topsoil and level off the areas, but we will come in well under what our initial ask was. So I just wanted to share that information with you and I'll email this out to you after the meeting so you got a copy of it. Any questions for Director Sonnenberg on the, on Trustee Joseph. Just, uh, just one question on yes, the sir. turf. I realize we're not playing sports on that turf, but just walking on it, it seemed a little different than uh, you know, what you might find on an athletic field. Uh, is this, uh, you know, a different grade, or what's the, uh, what, what do we have there? Instead of being a sport turf, it's a yard turf, because we wanted a more formal grass-like turf. And um, the thing with that is, is what we have to do, we wanted to let it settle a little bit, because there's so much, even though we compacted layer by layer as we built it up, that, tip, that particular turf, you let it settle a little bit, and we can actually run a compactor on it in time to settle it down. And we used um, essentially a six inch what looks like a six inch ardock nail which is almost like a timber stake sure. you drive those in around the perimeter you're able to pull that turf up at any time and kind of regrade around the perimeter because we do anticipate it's going to settle a little bit so we're going to give it time to rest they call it and then go back and make any adjustments just uh, in terms of walking on it i noticed that there were some you know minor undulations but this isn't a type of turf that you 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 put any kind of uh, i don't know what the terminology is but there's no like uh aggregate or anything that's mixed in with the turf no there's like not the there's sports a sports field there's a the no. rubber is, this, is there anything that goes into this that requires any maintenance nope that's the finished product it's, okay. it's supposed to look a natural grass the only thing we have underneath it is a 21 double a which is like a road grade yeah. when it's compacted so it will compact and toughen up in time the architect wanted to put a one inch layer of sand but the problem with the sand is the turf tends to sh shift and move and then you're constantly maintaining it trying to tighten up the edges the way we installed it was recommended by the installer. It comes with a, even though we put it in because it came late on site, it comes with a three year warranty and a light on the installation and a lifetime on the product. Great. Phenomenal stuff. Thank you. There. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? It was a phenomenal dedication on, uh, on last Saturday. Unbelievable showing and very emotional watching the Gold Star families. 
when they saw that, that, that memorial. Any, uh, anything else, Director Donovan? Any further department reports? Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further department reports, I'll move on to item number six, which is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There is no separate discussion of these items. If discussion of any item is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Public comments on the consent agenda are permitted. Do I have a motion? Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item 8B as well as item 8E from the published agenda. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Joseph to approve the consent agenda with the removal of agenda item 8B and 8E. Discussion from the board. Public comments are permitted from the, on the consent agenda. Discussion from or comments from the public. Uh, trustee Bosco. It's removal of 8B? 6B. Correct. Item 8B from your regular oh, agenda from and 8E. Okay. E. Right, okay. Yes, Item the regular eight. agenda. All right, thank All right. you. 8B and 8E, which are both resolution number fours relating to the special assessment districts. Any further comments from the board? Motion by Kirk Berry, support by Trustee Joseph to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item 8B and 8E from the agenda. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion prevails. Item seven is the, our public hearings. We have two of them tonight. Item 7A, conduct a public hearing for the proposed Sunrise Boulevard Paving Special Assessment District to consider objections to the petition for the improvement and to the creation of the special assessment district. Do you have a motion to open the public hearing? Motion to open the public hearing. Motion support. by Trustee Domingue to support by Trustee Vosper to open the public hearing. All those, um, all those in favor? Yes. All those in favor to open the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. The public hearing is open at 7, 18 p.m. This is a public hearing. Um, for the Sunrise Special Assessment District project. If you would wish to address the board and speak to this Special Assessment District, um, come to the microphone, make sure it's on, and state your name for the record. Hi, my name is Robert Duncan, and I thought that that road was covered in the February meeting. I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? I thought that road was covered at the February meeting. You mean the, the last meeting? Yes. Resolutions one and two, maybe, maybe the, the engineers here as well to talk on the process along with the assessor. But the, the special assessment process takes quite some time. In, uh, no, this is asking yes or no question. Was that covered at the February meeting? What do you mean meeting? by covered? Well, we, do, we voted on it for it to be repaved, the whole thing, and now we're voting again on the same thing? I don't understand. I don't know, I don't know if, the, um, if the attorney would comment on the process for an SAD and how many times we're going to have be having meetings and public hearings and re-upping re uh, re this. So. We, we had an informational meeting with the residents of Sunrise to specifically talk about the project and the special assessment process. So Correct. I think that's the meeting you're referring to. And at that meeting it was discussed and, and a straw vote was taken and it was overwhelmingly in favor to proceed with the project. So we released the petition to the petitioner and he circulated and got the the more than 50% signatures. So I believe that's the meeting you're referring to. So we're, we're moving forward. It, the special assessment process takes public hearings and, and actions from the board. We discussed the improvements, uh, and it, that was a step along the way. We still have to receive bids and, and build it and spread the role. The, re the result of that initial meeting was to determine if there was enough su support from the special assessment district, which in this instance is gonna be paying for 50% of the costs for the road, the other 50% will be the road commission, to start this process. So that meeting was to determine if there was enough support within the district to start the process for what you're looking at right now. 
We're in step three of the process, and this is going to go on for a little while, but at the end of tonight, um, it will be a project that moves forward toward, um, toward construction this year, so long as there's support in this room and in this board. Any further comments on the Sunrise Boulevard Special Assessment District for the public hearing? Come on up. Name's John Geisler, live at 46856 Rose Lane. Been there for 30 years. Sunrise is the entrance street that comes off Jefferson into our plotted subdivision, Anchor Bay Gardens. I was under the impression that Sunrise was turned over to the Macomb County Road Commission and that they would take responsibility of that entrance road. Is the board aware of that? I am very aware. Um, the, the townships do not own any roads, so they're either MDOT, county, or they're private roads. You are correct, this is a county road. The Macomb County Department of Roads um, owns Sunrise Boulevard. They own it, they maintain it, and they um, have the mechanism to fix it and repair it. So yes, you are correct, it is a Macomb County Department of Roads jurisdiction, and it's under their subdivisions category. Okay, so you're asking us to pay an assessment for a county road? No, uh, let, me, let me make sure I correct you on that. Um, and I, uh, correct me if yes, I... Yes, please do. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, is, uh, Geisa? Is that what Geisa, it? John Ge Geisa. John. Um, we're, we're acting on a request from the residents in the district. So we're not asking... We're, 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 we're facilitating what the process is. And the process is... The district initiates a special assessment district. We as a township facilitate <coughs> that initiate that, that special assessment district, which is what we're doing. So members of the district, um, uh, Mr. 61%, I believe in this, 60%, 60% of the homeowners and property owners in this district want to proceed with the special assessment district. So we are acting on behalf of the district. And they're aware that's a county road should be maintained by the county. Yes. Now, what I all, all I am, I, I, I'll just tell you the facts. And the facts are, if you want subdivision roads repaved, this is the only option. Um, it, this and there's a lot of them that don't have the 50/50 match piece of this. These two that are going to be up today um, do have and have qualified for Macomb County Road Commission's 50/50 match. The, the rest of them, unfortunately, and it could change next year, depending on funding and the, and the environment, but I wouldn't anticipate that to be the case. The cards that we have are, if you want, if a residents want subdivision roads repaved, this is the process, and this is the only option we have <laughs> at our disposal right now. Okay, uh, I hear you, but I'm still confused. Subdivision road, it's a county road. Trustee Vosberg. I'm thinking, Mr. Geisler, that um, you're thinking it's county road, they should pay 100%. Correct. Is that what you're thinking? Right. And so the way the uh, county road, they only have so much money. And so it may be on the list to fix, mm -hmm. but it might be 50 years from now. And they're saying it, it's sort of like saying if you want to be moved up the list, you have to pay for half of it, and then we'll, we'll move it up the list and get it done sooner. Would that be a fair way of I'm describing the process? The way I understand it, um, maybe. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right now, there is limited to zero, little to no funding for subdivision reconstruct projects in Macomb County without um, special assessment districts. But, but it just wants us, you want us to be aware the county owns it, why are we paying? Why are the, why are we why are the residents paying why for Why are the it? residents paying for it? We're not, the township's not paying for it, and we're not asking you to. You asked but enough homeowners, 60% of homeowners ask to pay. Okay, another question, oh, yeah. if I have time. Okay. The culvert on the end of the street is a flow through culvert. Will that be blocked or not? The, the, cul will, the culvert gets replaced. What's the culvert? The 16th culvert. Okay, one more. If people elect to do their streets, can they contact the paving company? 
assessment? Would, it, would this be a time that may the, the, the street, the side streets actually are private on that section. Right, I know um, that. That would be a private, uh, a private relationship. Our engineering department and um, DPW would be involved. It'd be a, it, 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 there's another process for that as well. So you, you, you could set up a special assessment district, but most of those streets have for private streets. Could you envelope, could it possible if we had enough time, could we envelope that together if we had enough people involved? Not into, you can't, you can't cross jurisdictions. So that we couldn't add private work into no, the I'm McComb County piece, that. but I'm, I'm but sure that that'd be a good time while the paving while the paving company's out there to deal with a private uh, okay. contract. Um, Trustee Joseph and then, uh, Trustee yeah, just uh, just wanted to point out to you, sir. We um, uh, along with uh, Trustee Vosberg and Mr. Ancavetti, the uh, governor was in Macomb County yesterday. Um, there was a luncheon. Trustee Anderson and I uh, got to hear her speak, and uh, she was introduced by County Executive Hackle. And uh, Executive Hackle indicated that he had just come back from the uh, policy uh, convention at Mackinac Island. And he said that his three top issues that he presented uh, in Mackinac, and I'm quoting him, were roads, roads, and roads. And then Governor Whitmer went into uh, discussing her strategy for paying for that. And of course, you know, there's a proposal for a 45 cent uh, per gallon gas tax. The reason I bring that up to you is it was pretty clear to me that when the executive and the governor started talking about Mound Road and Van Dyke, uh, Sunrise seemed to go, you know, down, down, down. And I think the supervisor's right. There's absolutely zero uh, room right now in the county budget to do anything uh, with these you know roads and they are county roads and a lot of residents are wondering the same thing you're going to hear about it tonight because there are a couple of special assessment district issues up and I hear as does trustee Anderson I'm sure other board members why are we paying for something that we're already paying taxes on I thought we were supposed to have roads what passes as a satisfactory road by the county standards may not be your standards and your neighbor's standards. So the special assessment district creates a situation where, as the supervisor said, all we're doing is sort of the go-between. The county is offered in these two instances that are before us tonight to take half of the cost. And so what's in essence happening is by way of petition, your neighbors, you, are asking the township to impose an assessment on you for the benefit of the road <coughs> in the condition that you want it in. Okay, it's a little clear. Uh, when will we know a final cost if it goes down to each individual? Yeah, yeah. Engineer O'Connor, if you could come up and talk about the timeline. Uh, the Rural Commission is preparing bidding documents right now and we'll receive bids probably in late summer. Yeah, early to late summer for fall construction this season. So at that, when we the county receive, receives bids, we'll know the price. Oh yeah, the, the intent is to build it this construction season. No, that's the whole road. The, the culvert is the most difficult part of this, this project actually. But, uh, it's to do the, they're going to bid the entire project, the culvert replacement and the, and the paving. Correct. Any further public comment? This is a public hearing. Oh, come up, sir, come up, go up, up to the, come up to the microphone if you could, sir. And then after we close the public hearing, you're more than, uh, my name is Gerald Engineer Lennox. I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. 35, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald Lennox. I've lived here for 35 years. I'm just wondering. I don't mind paying $1,600. That road is terrible. But if the bids exceed that, are the residents going to be charged a few hundred dollars more or possibly less, which I doubt, uh, depending on, on the bid? So there's statutes that lay out this process. Um, and there's a 10% up and down that is flexible, fle that would be flexible. Once the bid documents get put together, once the job goes out to bid and you actually get 
contractor bids. If it's substantially over, the Macomb County Road Commission is not going to spend uh, over a certain amount of money. So the, the project could could have an issue. Ten percent. Come on, come, come on up if you would. Our assessor can walk through this process, and this may help during, it's the exact same process during the Meadow Lane at Special Assessment District, which is coming up next. Uh, in response oh, to your, to your question. Dean, Mr. Bev, could you come up to the uh, microphone, please? Share the mic. In response to your question, uh, the estimates that we have right now are based on the best estimates from the Macomb County Department of Roads. If the costs exceed our estimate by 10%, then we will have to redo this process. You will have another opportunity to come before the board under a hearing of necessity and say, we wanted it at this price, the price has changed, now we don't want it. Again, the Department of Roads will, uh, if the costs exceed where we're at, um, probably not want to, to participate in the 50%. But at this point in time, as long as the costs come in within 10% of what our estimate is, uh, which is about 1,600 a unit, um, then we're fine. But if it's over six, six, over 10 percent higher than that, we will have another hearing of necessity. You will all be notified of it. The next step, when we get the final costs, I will prepare a final assessment roll with the actual costs from the bids. We will have another hearing. Uh, it will be sometime later in, in the summer. It will be the hearing of the cost where you will have an opportunity to review your specific actual cost, and that will be the cost of the, the assessment. That'll be at another hearing later into the summer. Starting the We're starting from the get-go with what we consider to be the best estimate at this time. Okay. Nobody knows. If it comes out less, you pay less. Okay. Thank you. Cheryl Holler, four six nine one two Rose Lane. Do you want me to sign in? Nobody has. Um, I don't think you do. I just I know it's too soon to ask what the plan is going to be for construction, but I'd like to ask that consideration be made. Rose Lane, or Sunrise is the only way into our subdivision. I have disabilities that one day I could probably walk a mile. Sometimes I can barely make it from my bed to the bathroom for a, a week straight. So I'm I'm asking for consideration that one side be done so that we can still drive into our subdivision, that one side be done at a time if that's at all possible. Thank you. This is a Macomb County Department of Roads issue. Access will always be available, whether it's through okay. um, driving on aggregate. There will be this, the normal construction problems that you see not only with Jefferson and 23 around our township right. but it is asphalt um, and even if it wasn't they'd be doing one side versus the other you might have a little bit of limited access depending on uh, you know, you know, trucks and everything else and there is a lot of homes on this little on this stretch yes I think, I think, I think the district's about 80 some odd homes so it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an issue Another piece um, that could very well, we're exploring also looking at the water main on this section um, in unison with this Someone's project. The, the water main in, in, okay. in unison, which may or may not happen um, concurrently. Treasurer Lafada. Um, just so the residents understand, there's also in, in that cost of the assessment is going to be the cost of money. Uh, the final resolution is going to have to have the approval from the township board how this is going to be funded. Either it comes out of the general fund or it's bonded. And generally it's 1% above prime. So they should understand that there is going to be a finance charge for the cost of money to carry that over the period of years for the assessment, just so everybody understands. Any further public comment? Thank you. Just a clarification for Treasurer Lafada. Is that uh, in part because the agreement requires, the, the county requires the, uh, the half, our half comes up front? They're not, they're not uh, waiting for. Uh, I don't think so. We, we, we pay that up front. Okay. And it's, you said 1% above prime? It, 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 we take it out of the general fund, it's 1% above prime or 1% above bond rate. Thank you. Any further uh, clarification or comments on, on that? Any further public comment? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Trustee Dubink. Oh, hold on, hold on one second. I think we have we have one more. Uh, 
Leonard Stopchinski. Uh, we're at uh, 46788 Jefferson. Um, I don't know why we are included in this. Uh, we don't need the road for access. Our road is Jefferson. So we don't, we don't have any need to be on this road. So why are we even included? Yet our address shows up. Assessor, uh, Mr. Babb, would you come up to the podium and... <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else to address the board with? And you can go over to the, uh, the assessors right over there, and uh, he can He's he can answer, answer your questions. questions. Yes. Any further public comments on the Sunrise Boulevard Special Assessment District public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing by Trustee Demink. Second. Second by. Clerk Barry, any objection to closing the public hearing? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. The public hearing is closed at 7.36 p.m. Item 7B is another, another public hearing and then there will be action items on both of these items. Item 7B to, con to conduct a public hearing for the proposed Meadow Lane Paving Special Assessment District to consider objections to the petition for the improvement and to, and to the creation of the Special Assessment District. Do I have a motion to open the Special Assessment District? Motion to open. Motion by Corey. Support by Trustee Domingue. All those in favor to open the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. The public hearing is open at 7.38 p.m. This is a public hearing on the Meadow Lane Special Assessment District. If you'd wish to address the board, please do the same thing that we just did for, for, sun, for Sunrise. You can ask any questions about the process. The, uh, uh, now's the time to submit your objections to this district. Or, Mr. Or Mr. Supervisor. Yes. I just perhaps um, clarifying uh, the, the SAD process as far as a geographical area that's identified as a sad district and I, I know cut mr. Seifer you can correct me on this and what happens once it's a it's as once you establish it when there's the vote of 51% uh, of the residents or property owners in that area that pertains to hundred a hundred percent of the properties or residents involved so it's not just the 51% Everybody's captured by that 51%. Am I correct on that? So, if the, if the attorney could give a brief overview on the special assessment district oh, process, created? yeah, I mean, in the, so in I mean, the, district, like, you know, the numbers now, the, yes. both of these, I don't like a 51% district, right. um, and I like that these are well over 60 um, or, in, or over near the 60 number. Um, and I don't know if the if attorney Siebert could just give a quick outline. The, 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 the process is, <clears throat> is relatively straightforward with respect to a paving special assessment district. It's hardly ever board initiated. It's always initiated by the residents. So the residents will prepare a petition. Usually the township will hand the, a petition that's already kind of cut and dried that we've used on other projects to, a, to petitioners within the subdivision or the, the residential area. The, they will take it door to door. They'll get as many signatures as they can to uh, uh, sign in favor of the improvement. Once you get more than 51% of the, of the front footage, of the people that are going to be on this road in favor of it. The petition is then submitted to the township. The township board then will look at it, and as long as they're satisfied that more than 51% are in favor of the project, we will then schedule a public hearing, which is happening tonight. And that's to give the people within the district an opportunity to come forward and speak on behalf of the project or in opposition to the project. The, the configuration of the district is created by the homeowners, not by the township. So you may say this road services this many parcels or it services the entire subdivision. That's, that district is calculated by the homeowners. At the end of tonight's meeting, it's, it's there to determine, A, is the improvement necessary? 
is the district appropriately configured? What are the estimates of cost? And what's going to be the term of the repayment? If the board approves both of those tonight, then the county will bid this project out. When the county has a firm number on what it's going to cost, the assessor will prepare a roll. And that roll is going to have everybody's parcel number on it. And it's going to tell you exactly what you're going to pay each year over the term of the district. There will be another public hearing where you can come to the board and either, you hardly ever speak in favor of this special assessment on what you're being assessed, but you can come in and at your time to object. You may say, look, I'm at the end of the road. I don't receive as much benefit as the guy next door or whatever your position might be. And then the board at the end of that public hearing, which is the last public hearing, will approve the role, presumably, and then it becomes a lien on the property and it's paid over a period of years, five, 10, 15 years, whatever the board decides, uh, and it's paid in annual installments. And then the process is over. So the township funds it, they build your road, you pay for it over a period of time, right. and it's over. Yeah, I understand that. Actually, the township funds it and the county bills. The well, in this case, you're getting the benefit of a 50-50 match right, by county. the county, which is not always the case. And you can pay it up front if you want. Yeah, we had a meeting uh, with the, with the uh, township engineer. Oh, did you try to address the board, and if you could speak in the because we can't with, hear you either. Meeting with the uh, township engineer in April, discussed the preliminary ideas of the project on uh, Meadow Lane. I'm at 48117 Meadow Lane. Mike Frankhouse, and I had some concerns at the time of the uh, water issues, drainage issues along the right of way. The uh, plans call for a minor uh, a uh, base repair and for HMA overlay. And uh, there's some discussion about replacing culverts or doing some ditching, but I'm not sure there's a lot of uh, thought or uh, emphasis involved in that part of it, but all the ditches along the roadway usually hold water for most of the year except for during the summer months when it's when it's dry out so those are concerns uh, mainly caused by the uh, driveway culverts are collapsed and they really don't uh, support any uh, drainage outlets to wherever they go so i'm just wondering if there's going to be any uh, any uh, further plan review or opportunities for the residents to take a look at the plans and see if those considerations have been included <coughs> in before the uh, project goes to levy uh, they could consider those, and I understand also that the cost will be shared with the property owners. So. If, if you could, if you could speak to that, I'll, I'll just make a quick statement on this. The county w actually wanted this special assessment district to be about four times as much, four times more money. Um, in the the additional, in this instance, would have been uh, about five hundred thousand dollars would have been drainage. Um, the petitions we got back d did not include the major drainage improvements, which would, have, which would have turned this into an $800,000 job approximately, or seven, versus the number it is at now. So, so here we are, we're, we're filling a prescription as a township. What yeah. we were asked to do by the district was um, minimal drainage. And uh, our engineer is behind you and he can speak a little bit further to it. I was just trying to understand what minimal drainage is compared to the, the full drainage of replacing everything so that's my concern is uh, you can take care of a lot of the drainage by certain locations but if you want to take it all you spend the 800,000 we get uh, estimates for the crush and shape and then also a yeah. full road construction and both were discussed at the meeting with the costs uh, and supervisor Acavetti is right the full reconstruction with the drainage is approximately four times more is that sidewalk? There's no sidewalks, no curb and gutter. They was to reset all the culverts and redo all the approaches and redo the uh, the side and the ditches. How does that compare with uh, just a road repaving cost? It's about one fourth. So at the meeting, we the informational meeting, uh, both projects were discussed, uh, and it was agreed by the district that the crushing and shaping would be the the project they would like to move forward with. No drainage repair. No drainage repair. <coughs> And again, that was discussed at length at the meeting. So there's no concern about <coughs> the uh, standing water year round and safety aspects with kids playing? Yeah, we, again, it was discussed and we've been out there. There is standing water. Uh, and the cost to, to repair that and fix that was discussed, but, uh, you know, the cost wasn't, uh, the residents didn't want to pay. 
that, that was a subdivision. That, that subdivision does not have underground storm sewer like some of the newer subdivisions have. Whether it's whether it's road, road storm sewer or rear yard, I don't I don't believe that that subdivision has rear yard storm sewer. So the drainage issues are going to exist in that subdivision. Um, another special assessment district may be necessary to deal with those drainage issues. Um, the one in front of us was presented with minimal draining to rebuild the road. But doesn't drainage also uh, help with the uh, longevity of the roadway? You see uh, the existing roadway is, has a lot of broken pavement right along the ditches. Edge, so if you don't replace the drainage, then you get a recurring problem. With the edges of the pavement Ab absolutely the any uh, the in, the infrastructure the, the better drainage you can get the, the the more the more water you can get away from whether it's concrete asphalt the longer term that road will last <laughs> now here being in the position we're in though where the only option that we have is for property owners to participate in the cost um, it's a it's a big number and if the if the district wanted to make that investment um, then we would facilitate that and encourage it. But that's not what was brought to us. What was brought to us was a mill and, and crush and reshape of, of just the road. And, and crushing and shaping the road will put a crown on the road. It'll help. A four inch cap will crown. So the, right now the water stand, it sits on the road. Yeah, the and that's a problem. Uh, when the project is done, there will be a proper crown on it. This is a res residential area with a lot of children. So right now the uh, the road is kind of a cut through from 21 mile to Gratiot, so we get a lot of heavy traffic, high speed, and I don't know what the enforcement uh, pr uh, proposal is for the future, but it seems like if you improve the, uh, the roadway surface, you're gonna get a lot more speeders that go in front of the houses. So that's another issue that really should be looked at after the project's completed with police or the county, whoever enforces. Thank you, any comments from the board or any additional, thank you, sir. Any additional public comments on the Meadow Lane Special Assessment District public hearing? Motion to close the Meadow Lane public hearing. Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Vosford to close the Meadow Lane public hearing. Are there any, is there any objection or final speakers on the Meadow Lane public hearing? Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Vosper to close the public hearing for Meadow Lane Special Assessment District. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. The public hearing is closed at 7.48 p.m. Item number eight is the regular agenda. 8A, adopt resolution 2019-10. Number three, for the Sunrise Paving or Sunri Sunrise Boulevard Paving Special Assessment District, which confirms the sufficiency of petitions, approves the estimates of cost, and is a final determination to proceed with the Special Assessment District. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 2019-10 as stated with the following change. Under point three, the township board hereby approves the plans and estimates of cost currently says in the sum of two hundred nine thousand five hundred nineteen dollars that has been amended to read one hundred thirty two thousand two hundred and forty six dollars support motion by clerk Barry. support by trustee joseph i do believe we need a couple of other it's one other the term of years for this the district the, the term which Five, ten years Maybe five or ten years, and I think uh, assessor. Oh, he is outside. Ten years, I believe, is the option there. For a period of ten years. Continued support. Motion by Clerk Barry, support by Trustee Joseph. Discussion. <laughs> Comments on the board? Comments from the public again on the Sunrise Boulevard. Resolution number 2019-10, number three. Motion by Clerk Berry, support by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye.
Item 8B has been removed. Item 8C, request the Township Board of Trustees to authorize Supervisor Acovetti to execute the cost share agreement with the Macomb County Department of Roads for Sunrise Boulevard Paving Special Assessment. The cost share agreement specifies the township share at 50% of, con of project costs and the county share at 50% of so project costs. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support. Support by Trustee Vosper. Discussion. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support by Trustee Vosberg, Clifford, please call the roll. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Clerk Berry. Aye. Motion prevails. 8D. Adopt resolution 2019-12, number 3, for the Meadow Lane Paving Special Assessment District, which confirms the sufficiency of petitions, approves the estimate of cost, and is the final determination to proceed with the Special Assessment District. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-12 with the following change. Item number three, the township board hereby approves the plans and estimates of costs in the sum of, it currently says $132,246. That has been amended to read $120,942. That shall be levied in annual installments for a period of 10 years. Motion by Clifford. Support. Support by Trustee Domingue. Discussion. Comments from the public. Motion by Clerk Berry, support by Trustee Demink. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Motion prevails. 8F. Request the Township Board of Trustees to authorize Supervisor Acovetti to execute the cost share agreement with the Macomb County Department of Roads for Meadow Lane Paving Special Assessment. This cost share agreement specifies the township share at 50% and the county share at 50%. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee DeBank. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Discussion. From the public. Motion by Trustee DeBank. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee DeBank. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Cook Berry, aye. Motion prevails. Item 8G, approve a request for the payment of annual dues to the Michigan Townships Association for, for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 in the amount of $6,898.94. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Clerk Berry. Support. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Discussion. Clerk Berry, please call the roll. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Item motion prevails. Item 8. H. Approve the request from Comprehensive Youth Services to distribute funds deposited into trusting agency in accordance with the Seville Manor reuse plan in the amount of $81,250. I'll make a motion to approve as stated. Support. Motion by Supervisor Acovetti. Support by Trustee Joseph. Discussion or questions? Trustee Bosper. Um, I, I understand what this is for. This was a commitment that was made by the LRA re regarding this uh, Seville Manor. But it's my understanding this will not cost the township any money. It's just sort of a pass through. The purchaser of the property is paying this money, giving it to us, and then we're sending it out to the organizations that to which it was promised yeah I, I, i'm going to trustee bosper he's or, I'm, I'm sorry treasurer lafada has been we, holding we, on to these funds for a while when <laughs> Sabil manor was taken over by the va there was a transfer of those funds they've been a trusting agency ever since awaiting the approval to dispense disperse them mm -hmm. but the funds are, are, are we already have the funds to disperse right. thank you and you are absolutely correct. This piece was a when when Selfridge or Brack back in 2004 2005 determined that Sibyl Manor was going to be offloaded. This is, was an agreement that was put in in the township 15 years ago, and when it was sold to the state of Michigan, we had to take this money. It was 
a contingent um, on the state of Michigan closing this and we are dispersing it in accordance with the agreement that was made uh, 15 years ago. There is another half that the township still has in trust and agency um, that will not be distributed until the, all the proper channels are, uh, are met. Any further comments or questions from the public? Motion by Supervisor Ecovetti, support by Trustee Joseph. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Motion prevails. Item 8I. Approve a request by Supervisor Ecovetti to contract with OHM. Advisors in the amount of $35,000 for water quality <coughs> and habitat monitoring for the anticipated Brandenburg Park shoreline restoration project out of account number 545-756-801. And I'm going to have an amended motion on the final copy. Thank you. I apologize. I will make a motion to approve a request by Supervisor Acovetti to contract with OHM advisors in the amount of $25,000 to perform necessary reptile, fish, and water quality <coughs> pre-monitoring as required for the anticipated implementation of the Brandenburg Park Shoreline Restoration Project. The appropriation is contingent upon receiving a recommendation of award from the Great Lakes Commission for year two, 2020 funding of the project. Motion, by, motion by Supervisor Ecovetti, support by Trustee Joseph. <coughs> Discussion, uh, Treasurer LaFay. Um, when I received the uh, amendment today that went from 35,000 to 25,000 along with the quote from OHM, um, I got some other documentation and it does not reconcile with the numbers that are on the executive summary. Um, the executive summary has uh, numbers on it for 111,505 for project management, 646,407 for construction, 35,000 for monitoring for a total of $792,912. A document that I received this afternoon is a quote from H OHM that is quoted on January the 22nd with six tasks. The, the tasks are named project initiation, preliminary engineering design, final engineering design, project coordination and management with two options, public engagement option and peer evaluation. The numbers on the executive summary and the numbers on the quote from OHM do not reconcile with one another. Um, to me, that's an issue because uh, I, I, I can't understand what our engineering costs are because we have different nomenclature on, on the board agenda and we have different numbers from the quote from OHM. Uh, the other thing is, uh, have, do we have a grant in place with the amount approved? Do we have a project number in place with accounting to track the spending? And is there any risk of moving forward without an approved grant? Uh, if, 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 uh, just as a second on this motion, I, I wanted to clarify my support for the motion was in part because it captured exactly what you're, some of what you're speaking to, and uh, specifically that is, contingent on the approval of the grant. So I thought uh, that was our uh, you know, sort of safeguard in terms of all of the uh, investment on the project is really contingent upon the, uh, the big dollars coming in the form of the grant. So I read this and I hope I'm right. There really is no risk here for any of these expenditures unless the grant is in place and, and it's approved, if, if, if that's correct. I'll, I, will, I will try to fill in some, some blanks here. Um, and our consultant <coughs> engineer is here along with Director Sonnenberg, and I'll, and I'll turn it over to them. Um, two different things. One was this board approved 
the grant that we, Chesterfield Township, got awarded through NOAA to design this shoreline habitat project. Step one was the design of this project, which is, uh, Steve, Stephen can speak to that, it's approximately 60% complete. OHM is our advisors. Um, step number, I'm not sure if this is what, this is, this is the step you were referring to. This is the implementation, which, two is, which, which is a separate. Yeah, two separate, separate projects, separate. correct. And I just saw the uh, document here that you're looking at. And, uh, I haven't seen it since. There's, since there's, just no, now. there's no, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason for a total engineering number between the documents that we have. But the, so now we're, we're, now we're talking about implementation. In, implementation now, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to, uh, to Mr. Sonnenberg. Uh, we're, if, if you watched my state of the township, there's only so much I can say, um, but this project is got a lot of shoreline that. Um, interesting parties are very interested in softening the shoreline. There's a very good chance in the near future this could be selected for funding. In order to keep the process moving forward, no matter what, if we want to soften the shoreline this year, next year, or the year after, pre-monitoring is going to have to be complete. Um, this will keeps us on schedule for potentially seeing this park being opened back up in 2020. And I'll, I'll, I'll maybe direct the rest well, of the question. So, to you. so I, I, I oh, go ahead. I, I still, I still have a control issue of not understanding moving forward what this project's going to cost us on an engineering standpoint from the numbers that, that I have, which I think is kind of crucial because we don't have a project number in accounting to accrue our spending against. And every time we do this, I mean, this is this is could be the Warburg Paddle Park all over again where we're going to spend money and we don't know how much we spent until the end of the day. So, I, I mean, we seem to want to rush and jump ahead. I read, I read the grant documentation. We have to November 2021 to finish this project. This, this is a, this is, I know this is kind of unusual and it's going to take a little bit of explanation because projects like this usually don't move this fast. This is rare, extremely rare. I'm sure Stephen could speak to this. Right. So, so, but I just want to cover two things. First, we're talking about two different projects, as Dan mentioned. The first project was we were fortunate enough to get a grant for the design and engineering, which we are 60% complete, totally separate. NOAA liked the project so much, NOAA and Great Lakes Commission, they came back to us and they said, you're not going to believe us, but there's a good chance that NOAA wants to pr fund this project. Starting in January, implementation, 2020. That's a unique opportunity. So they said in order to do that, we have to start checking off some of the boxes towards the implementation project. So most of the documentation Treasurer Lafada is referring to is a project that we've already started regarding the design, which we're continuing to do. And Stephen could speak to that. We're at 60%. This project is going to be a totally separate bucket of money that's implementation. Two totally separate things. So all we're asking for is we put together a proposal. Originally, Noah came back to us with a sum of 500 and some thousand dollars. We upped the ask. Stephen could speak to that to about $840,000 for our total grant for the implementation, separate than the design and engineering. And what we're after is we want it, when this gets approved from NOAA, in other words, when we get a letter, a full letter of intent from NOAA, we would like the green light to go ahead and spend this money, which we've already put in the grant to be reimbursable once we get our grant funded. So there's really no risk. What we're trying to do is just set us, set us up because too many projects in this township take too long, and if we do it the way historically we've been doing things, it's gonna slow the go. And I think now that we have the people in position for the, to put the safeguards in place to move the needle, I believe that's our job to do so. Speed these processes up and get these projects through. With every intent, like Treasurer Lafada, I appreciate his expertise looking at this stuff. I always value his opinion, and I can trust that I can explain it to you. We can detail by detail to answer all your questions. So I think uh, we're, Treasurer Lafada and I are in the same, is I like your idea of trying to expedite the process. And the reason that I'm supporting the motion is because the safeguard is none of this, none of these resources get allocated. It's contingent on grant approval. So the safeguard for me is the grant approval. I think it would be helpful for other board members, and I don't want to speak for them, 
if you laid out the anticipated cost so that as the asks come in, they're consistent with a shift in the project. So you, we're all operating from design. You're now uh, got some very promising feedback on the implementation phase, which exceeded our biggest hope. And you're trying to act on that, and I respect that, and, I, and that's why I supported it. It would be helpful for us, for, all, for us to include, um, you know, the path. It, it is in some in some regard a um, if this falls in line, then we're in a great position to receive this. It's very proactive, but it does also lack some ability to follow if you're not on the, uh, you know, in the trenches, sort of working this out as it goes. I had the benefit of bumping into you. Uh, at the memorial and you had just gotten the news and you were very excited and you laid it out for me and I understood where where you were going and why this ask was here tonight but you know it, to 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 provide an outline as you're moving forward could be helpful uh, trustee Joseph because you're the second of the motion I want to make sure we're very clear on the motion as it's written as it's written the appropriation is contingent upon receiving a recommendation of award from Great Lakes Commission for the year 2020 funding of the project. I will lay out that process a little bit, um, as I understand it, just to make sure you're absolutely clear. At some point in the, it could be a month, could be two months, the Great Lakes Commission is going to hear from NOAA that their partnership in 2019 will or will not include this project. At that point is when I would like to be able to start this pre-monitoring. Now, when it is actually done and funded is after the appropriations bill makes its way through the United States Congress, which could lag behind this a, t a tad. I'm worried of waiting until after that approval because it could potentially push us into 2021. So I, I don't want to, I want to make sure that I'm very clear with you when when Great Lakes Commission gets, this project is going to be recommended for funding. That generally gets done and passed through Congress, um, but it is not a done deal until Congress gets done with that process. So I, I, wanted I, do, to I wanted to make sure that you, I was very clear with you on that. I do appreciate your clarification. I would like to withdraw my support for the motion. The catch for me was the fact that we're not expending any money until the grant uh, is is approved and I understand the process now and I respectfully withdraw my support of the motion. Okay. Motion by Supervisor Acovetti. Um, is there support? Support. Support by Trustee Domingo. Uh, Treasurer Lafayette. Uh, it seems like we're still going to move forward without having any ac accountability for all the amount we're going to spend on this project. There, there's not a defined number. Yeah, yeah, the, actually, actually, there is a defined number right now. If, if you look on the executive summary, the total implementation cost is just about nine hundred thousand dollars, eight ninety-two, eight seventy-three. The NOAA funding piece of that is seven hundred twenty-three thousand. The township participation is going to be approximately a hundred and seventy thousand dollars, which will be brought back here at a different at a different date. Right well, now, we're just we're, we're, the only ask is twenty-five thousand dollars. To proceed with the pre-monitoring and really really it comes down to this um, we this board already approved the design in a substantial amount of Chesterfield monies to proceed with the design to soften this shoreline so why why are we proceeding there because we got seven eight hundred foot of shoreline that's failed um, and the only way we can get grants is for softening of shorelines um, and this is one that is um, got a whole lot of potential. The next option, if this does not go through, and regardless, we'll need pre-monitoring if we soften the shoreline. The next option is to bring back a uh, eight, 900 foot seawall project with zero funding, um, zero potential grant funding from any level of government. And the number would be just as big, but totally borne by Chesterfield. So, um, that's the that, that that's kind of the position that we're looking at. Um, the chair I'm sitting in, that park is uh, way too big of an asset to let that shoreline stay in that condition for one more year. And this, I think, is the most optimistic way to get it fixed and usable as quick as possible. Treasurer Lafada. Um, representative from OHM, 
this, this project uh, is going to cost us, in, in engineering fees, 111505 So just to speak a little bit, um, and I appreciate the, you know, the questions and the complexity of this, uh, things have been moving fast. And we're bringing this to you today. I, I mean, yep. it's a yes or no well, answer. Well, the yes, the 111 is not not solely engineering fees. That's estimated all total project management fees. So it might be time okay. for Chesterfield, it might be engineering, it might be field okay, work. Okay, so mm -hmm. the 111,000 is that plus the 40 that we've already committed plus the 25 that's on the table tonight. So that is in addition to that's a separate line item, and and these are. Our budgetary figures they're not they're not actual contract values but they're estimated figures of what the total uh, project may cost based on our design today so um the forty thousand is that i'm not sure where the forty thousand comes we, from we got forty thousand no, that, 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 that's for, the design got, not the implementation we got so forty thousand that we design. committed for the right. current current design is supposedly sixty percent complete twenty five thousand on the table uh -huh. and one hundred eleven thousand on another line item in the executive summary is that the total amount because uh, uh, engineering winds up being a moving target and it doesn't seem like anybody wants to commit to it so the the forty thousand that's already been spent that is on the design phase well i understand <coughs> but is, is this all cumulative or so is no, it so these are two in these are two in, entirely separate phases so it's one. cumulative it's a hundred it's forty thousand mm -hmm. plus 111 plus 25. when everything's said is and done is there anything yeah. else in there so there's going to be the actual construction costs of the improvements um, so that's what was estimated around seven hundred and forty thousand for just the construction so this number really isn't any good here as far as total project number I mean, it's not. Let me, let me speak to this. So he, here's the thing. So this, this project was, this has been discussed and discussed, and we discussed this with Eric Ellis, who's done more projects than anybody. He's the project coordinator for Great Lakes. He agreed to these numbers, and we also, we're not trying to sell you a bad deal here. I, I mean, I represent okay. Chesterfield. The biggest thing for us is we communicated with them that this project is 100% scalable. In other words, let's say we get to the project and we find, we get a little bit closer that, we're going to spend a little bit more money. We're going to shrink this project down. In other words, there's a break wall in the lake that depending on the total cost of this project, we're going to work under the grant funding. If the grant funding comes in at this total amount, which they're telling us it will, preliminarily, we're going to, we're going to scale our project when we get these final numbers to that size. In other words, the break wall might be shrunk or the shoreline project, the, the actual shoreline softening where we would replace the seawall, that's key to us because we need to get that done. But if we need to, in order to stay in budget, we'll. So under no conditions are we going to spend a, more than a hundred or eight hundred and some odd thousand dollars. We, we could we, we could we could dig a hole and and find something totally unusual. I, I, I really I really don't understand not having any kind of project accounting in place. It's not good business. I, I can give you an example, just like the wall in the back, the one it's, shot it's, we've had it's since not we've been here. It's a matter here. of the twenty five thousand or the forty thousand. It's a matter of having a business case in place and filing it so we can manage the program. So the the residents' tax dollars. It's not my money. It's Paul, the every every single project that I'm on with you, you have the same argument. Oh, over and over and over. Somewhere, sometime, somehow, we got to move the needle on some of these projects. You fight with me on Weber every time we talk. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Just hold on. Um, let, let me try to answer that question. And we, we, well, we, why we, don't, why we, don't, no, no, why gonna, don't we table this and come back with some, I'm, some realistic well, I'm numbers? Gonna, I'm going to try to answer your question. No, it's ridiculous. I'm going to try to. This is ridiculous. This is a Weber panel part. Why don't you I'm, bang that, 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 that a couple that, more times? Let me try to answer your question. I don't want you to, to slough off. It's a valid answer, and I never get a good one. Let me know when you're complete, okay? I'm, I'll, I'll give you the respect. I never get a valid answer, only that we have to move forward. I never get any good mathematical answers. Can All I get is excuses. Can I speak? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> your, your question, I believe, and, and rephrase it if, you, if I misstate it, was <laughs> are we guaranteed that we're only going to spend $892,000 on this project? Well, that's what Josh just said. That was, was that your question? Yeah. Okay. You're never guaranteed 
on any. He heavy, just told me he was going to shrink the project would to you make like it within me the to, budget. Would you like me to what answer is the, the budget? Question? Would you like me to answer the question? But you're not giving me a budget number. You're giving me a bunch of numbers here. Everyone else can see it. It's eight hundred and ninety-two thousand eight hundred and seventy-three dollars. So that's that. We're not going to spend any more money. Well, no. So now I'll answer your question. <laughs> It, it, it's the same for every. It's a yes or no answer. No, it's not. no it listen. isn't. It, li listen, and it's the <coughs> same discussion we had two years ago. Any road project, bridge project, or sewer project is a unit price contract. It's a unit price contract. So what the contract, what you pay in the contract, is the tonnage of stone that you use to build the wall. That is to protect the owner. So eight hundred and ninety. $2,373 plus the $150,000 for design and monitoring implement, implementation of this. We're looking at a $1.1 million project potentially for Brandenburg Park with the Chesterfield resident piece being under $200,000. A new seawall would be more like $800,000 with no participation. So hold on. So every one of these jobs, whether it's the Salt River Bridge, there's items and it's based on unit prices whether it's parking lots you're only going to pay as an owner the amount of concrete get, that gets put down the you're going to pay for the amount of stone that is required for a wall so your best probable estimate which is what these are you'll see everything comes out even the sunrise paving sad that is not locked in at <coughs> that number once the Maybe extra tonnage of asphalt is needed to build an approach. Maybe it needs to be a little extra depth here because the, uh, the subsoil conditions are there. So you're never locked in, you're never locked in. Um, and no civil engineer would ever commit to that. However, I am very confident in that firm and I'm very confident in this team, our best probable guess is $892,000 for the implementation of that Brandenburg Shoreline project, of which um, 722,000, you know, the 723,000 of which will be awarded through a grant. I anticipate it falling under this. I anticipate the project going better and not running into um, issues where they're, where you gotta put in more stone, more, more things. The contract allows and protects the owner for that. None of these can be set in stone. Now on an engineering standpoint, we, we're going to get a hard engineering number from that gentleman. And that number is going to be based on a design. That number is going to be based, now when changes happen to that design, whether it is a, a, a ground condition that changes or a, a change from our township, then we will be requesting additional they, they would be requesting additional design fees to implement those changes. So our best possible guess and it is just a guess and I don't care if it's this community or any community around the whole country um, and I'm very confident with it is that number. Supervisor. I don't know if that answered the question but there's there's, there's, there's no way to lock these numbers well, in. Trustee well, Joseph. Thank you. Mr. Uh, uh, Supervisor and all due respect I think what is a little bit different on this debate is not whether or not we have unit pricing and guarantees but it was in Mr. Sonnenberg's presentation, and the presentation as I heard it was this. We hope to get a grant amount in this, this is the dollar amount we, we estimate. You put it in the executive summary, the anticipated funding is 722, that would leave, in the terms of the grant, a match of 169, 169,000 for the township. So Treasurer Lafada, the ask, as I understood it, was so we are not spending more than 892 and then we got your explanation which was about unit pricing and so forth but what I heard you say is that is the number and what we will do is scale the project based on the number that comes in so it's just like any other any other uh, purchase that even our residents would would make so if I budgeted 20,000 for a car uh, I, I may get some options I may not and I would scale back the project which is what I understood you to say this is the dollar amount we're working with and we're going to do everything that we can do based on that dollar amount. So it's not about unit pricing. And when you're talking about uh, a road, the road project has to get done. If the unit tonnage of stone goes up or asphalt goes up, 
then the project goes up. You have to finish the job. In this case, this is a, we, we could do a lot of things with that shoreline. And I've seen, you know, you, you, you're a very visionary guy. You've got a lot of plans, contingency plans based on this amount of money and this amount of money. The problem that I have, and I think that is causing, you know, some friction on the board is this. We have had a lot of things that are referred to as scope changes and shifting, and it gets very frustrating. And then it's typically met with, well, you just don't understand this is how it goes in every project and there's unit. On the front end of the project, I think it's appropriate to say, how much as a board are we interested in allocating in this particular remedy for this particular problem? Because we talked about repairing the seawall, replacing the seawall. This was an option that best fit our community from a want, need, and budget standpoint. It was the best option going. But you did include in part of your presentation tonight a, well, we've already allocated this much money. Why wouldn't we? And that's the slippery slope that I have the problem with that I know Treasurer Lafada is talking about tonight. It becomes really a method of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So you get in, you go, well, you've already put this much money in, you've already put this much money. You find that you're pouring money into a project and you have loss aversion because you've already put in so much, you don't want to abandon. So I think it is practical and right, and especially, you know, I speak Lafada. I understand, I understand his very black and white, uh, very easy to follow. You put it on a budget, you manage your project based on your budget. If you go in the other way, and well, we're going to get the best we can get and we just keep moving the budget that you're going to see the problem that you see tonight. And so I think it is uh, probably beneficial to talk about uh, what it is that we're willing to to go to. I heard I heard and I appreciated the clarification right now. The ask is for twenty five thousand. It puts us in the greatest position to receive the most amount of grant opportunity. It's proactive and it's a little more uh, expedited than we're accustomed to. But you've got to appreciate some of the history that's gone on and some of the biggest debates that we've had on this board have to do with things like overruns and uh, Weber, as you mentioned, I know that's under your uh, skin a bit too, but you know, we've paid for stakes three times out there. So there's room for effective project management in a, in a project that's seven figures and we know it from the front end. We gotta be a little tighter. That, that's my only uh, contribution to this. I agree with you 100%. And, and part of this is, just to remind everybody, is originally when we went through this process, we were at the point where no one wanted to give us a grant for this project along with the Great Lakes Commission. And they asked for our total all-in ask for a project cost. So what they were prepared to do is fund this project 100% at the time. They came up with, this was when we got our original grant, when we were having discussions about the original grant that we changed the scope from the full implementation, design and engineering, to just design and engineering, because our thought was is, now let's get a grant for just the design and engineering component, which is what we have, so we now can take actual drawings that make sense and get realistic prices before we go ahead and ask for a grant. Because in the scenario before this one, we would have been, let's say we got a grant for half a million dollars, but our design was what is now almost a million dollars, we would have been on the hook for the additional amount. That's how you get yourself caught in these traps. What we're trying to do is step by step, and I do appreciate there is a there is a lot of discussion that goes on in the background, and I wish we could have we could have a special meeting on just this subject on how much effort and engineering we put into this to make this information as sound and secure as possible for us. We're just I apologize, you know, here we can only give you the cliff notes sometimes, but that's why we get so passionate because we're so involved in these projects. Well, just last comment, if I may, Mr. Supervisor, I I, I got to tell you on a personal note. Some of the best projects, some of the best things that have happened in this township are really due to your vision and your commitment. So I don't want you to think that that's questioned at all. I also just want you to keep in mind, uh, Treasurer Lafada works tirelessly, and I'm really, really proud of the work that he does. He, he, he does come across, and I don't think it's intended to be uh, adversarial, but uh, he, he watches those numbers, and I think the township is really blessed to have him there. Uh, please try to keep you know, uh, keep keep working with us because I, I know you you took this job. I think primarily because of what you saw potential out at Brandenburg, and uh, I know this is this is personal to you. This is your home and uh, your family, and you would really like to see what all of us would like to see. Uh, but we we have to get there in a completely transparent way. And um, Treasurer Lafada comes at it pretty hard. I respect it. I know you do too. Uh, but let's try to keep ourselves together as we debate this. Tre Treasurer.
trustee Domingue, and then I'll report trustee Anderson. It's just Brandenburg Park issue. <coughs> We've got to do something. You guys put me on Parks and Rec Commission. Brandenburg's our jewel. We've got to do something with that shoreline. That seawall's been failing for years. We've all been out there. This is a great idea. I think this constant going back and forth. So we got to take a risk. We've got to spend a little money, Paul. But Doc, got, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. That's a beautiful park. And if we miss a $700,000 grant, I'm gonna be upset. And if you wanna talk about a seawall, I'll tell you right now, seawalls right now are a minimum of $300 a foot, because I just priced them, and, and maybe even higher. So and you're gonna get a natural habitat. John's been working his tail off on it. We're not, this and the money's not going to stupid places. And on the second thing, we've got three engineering companies with this township now. We used to only have one. There was a lot of breakup on this board over when we had one engineer. So we went out, we got three different engineering firms to work with this township to split it all up so nobody thinks somebody's doing something wrong. And, and, and we're still, every time it comes to an engineering project, I'm sorry, Paul, you just rip it apart. These guys are engineers. I'm not an engineer. You're a mathematician, but that man's an engineer. He knows more about engineering than I think you and I ever will. Never happened. 27 years I work in engineering, and never could I bring a project like this with numbers that don't tie to a, to a, to a, a, a corporate board for approval. It's not an idea. It's not the idea of not wanting the project. It's the idea of putting a proper business plan together and following it so you can manage it. I'm not saying don't spend the money. I'm saying spend it wisely. And if you don't understand what you're going to spend today, then sit down for a, an, a, you know, for a couple of days and do some thinking before you come and ask for money. This is not a business plan right now that in any private sector would be accessible. I'm not saying not to fix the Brandenburg Park. What I'm saying is put a business plan together to manage the taxpayers' dollars. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Trustee Anderson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sufar, you, you brought up a point of uh, going with this uh, this action here versus the expenditure that the township might have to absorb regarding a seawall on this um, issue. Um, I know there was changes today that came down. You submitted some changes on this. We're looking at these figures. The points Mr. Lafada brought up, Mr. Joseph uh, articulated on, would it, 14 more days, would that, I mean, Congress is kind of busy on some other issues right now. I don't think they're gonna vote on this right away. They're, they, they're on some other issues, but, would it be possible, motion maker, to table us until our, our uh, next meeting to the 18th and readdress I, it at I, that point? I, I'm just not interested. If somebody wants, wants to make a motion to table, they can, and we can, that, that'll supersede my motion, but I am not interested to table it or postpone. I would like to speak. Okay, Trustee Bosman. If he's finished, are you finished? Are you finished? If the speaker's finished, yeah, I would like Trustee to speak. Anderson, are you finished? All right, I want to make that motion that we no, table us. Um, well, Motion to table? Step. Yeah, motion Arizona. to table. Hold on one second. Would be a motion to postpone? No, meeting. motion to, motion to table would be we, we take it out later in this meeting. Are you are you making a motion to table or you're making a motion to postpone? <coughs> motion to postpone until the eighteenth. Okay. Motion to, is is motion to postpone to the eighteenth by trustee Anderson. Is there support? Support. Support by Treasurer Lafada. Discussion. There's no discussion. Yes, there is. There, there, there's discussion on motions to postpone, but oh, not I, to table. I'm correct. So if we were tabling it, if we were laying it, laying it on the table to later in this meeting, yep. there would be discussion. There was yep, no discussion. That's an immediately voted motion. So discussion on the, on the, on the motion to postpone. I'm, yes, you're absolutely right. May I speak? Yes, I, just I, I do not support motion to postpone because I think it's, we're voting right now. We're just voting to spend twenty-five thousand if we get approved by this grant. When and if the grant point of order, that's not true. The, the okay. clarification from Wait, the supervisor was no, the reason I, I withdrew my motion. I understand until it's appropriate. I understand that part of it. If that's what you're getting at. If we receive this, if we get this grant, we'd still we're taking the risk if it's actually appropriate. Is that correct? Yes. Is that the element of risk? Well, no. I, I'll, I'll, on, on the motion to postpone, um, I'll, I'll answer your. I'll answer your question. 
really the, de the, de the decision right here, right now is, um, do we want to see through potentially um, next season um, with the, the softening and repairing of Brandenburg shoreline with a grant? Re regardless if there's going to be a softening of the shoreline, there's going to be pre-monitoring needs to be done. If this pre-monitoring, if, if it gets done this fall, is good next year, the year after, in the year after. Um, it's good if we if, if the grant opportunity goes away and we we search for a way to put a beach in there or do something else and get another grant point of order, which it'll Mr. happen mr supervisor point of order I'm you're, you're talking about the motion the original motion and not the motion to postpone uh, there's a motion on the floor okay, I, 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 I think, did i answer your question so the well i just want to speak just let me speak whether okay. i'm speaking correctly or not because someone else had said that's not absolutely true my point is where it's a motion to spend some money if something is approved. So we're not spending any money if, if this other grant isn't approved. But even if we do, it's going to a good project, a good um, information that we're going to need regardless of what we do, regardless of how much grant money we get. We need to move on, we need to proceed and get this done with. Thank you. Any, and further, thank you. any further comments on the motion to postpone? Motion by Trustee Anderson, support by Treasurer Lafada to postpone this item 8I to the June 18th meeting. Clerk, Larry, please call. <coughs> Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee, uh, Treasurer Lafada. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Nay. Trustee Vosper. No. Supervisor Acovetti. No. Clerk Barry. No. Motion to postpone fails. Back to the original motion, which is to, um, with the, the revised motion that I made, and I'm not going to read it again until the end. Any further discussion on the motion as presented? Just one point of clarification. The 25000 is not, uh, th this, this 25000 spent for the purpose that it was outlined in the motion has nothing to do with the grant. That monies, those monies will be spent if we get the grant that is part of the grant, so it would be it would be applied to the uh, match obligations and all the conditions of the grant. If the grant is not applied, the twenty-five thousand will be spent, and it, it has nothing to do with the need for a seawall or any other decisions that we make down the road. This is a twenty-five thousand dollar expenditure that is for the purposes outlined in this, independent of whatever happens with the grant. So, so fair no statement. I so, so NOAA has offered the, the 700 and some thousand dollars as a grant. This monitoring, uh, the 25,000 is requirement to get that grant money. So if you're going to do habitat restoration for under the NOAA uh, federal grant, you will, you will need to do this as a requirement. If you don't you know, proceed with that grant uh, and you only do say a hardened seawall replacement, th then this wouldn't be necessary, but you would also be losing the benefit of getting that grant money from Thank the you. federal agency. Any further discussion from the board? Motion by Supervisor Acovetti to approve a request to contract with OHM advisors in the amount of $25,000 to perform necessary reptile, fish, and water quality pre-monitoring as required for the in anticipated implementation of the Brandenburg Park Shoreline Restoration Project. The appropriation is contingent upon receiving a recommendation of award from the Great Lakes Commission for year two which is 2020 funding for the project. Motion by myself, support by Trustee Domingue. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Supervisor Ecovetti. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. No. Trustee Joseph. No. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Lafada. No. Clerk Barry. Aye. Motion prevails. Item 8J, approve a request from Global Dreams for a vending license permit variance for a 20 by 4010 at 5205 North Gratiot Avenue for the sale of fireworks from June 25th, 2019 through July 6th, 2019, business operating hours 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it is pending approval from the license, from receiving approval from Lara. 
Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the request from Global Dreams, Inc. for a vending license permit variance uh, for the 20 by 40 tent and uh, at 52050 North Gratiot Avenue for the sale of fireworks from June 25th through July 6th, 2019. Operating hours 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Pending approval from Lara. Motion by Clerk. I will support. This will be the fourth fireworks vending ten here. One thing I do want to clarify, the prior three had very similar, the same business operating hours and the same size tent. The difference between this one is it goes from June 25th through July 6th, where the other ones went from June 24th through July 5th. So there, there will be a one day um, overlap there just to wanted to change that I don't really mind um, mind that either way it's the same amount and we're in the same position we were um, when the other three came across and I expect this to be the last one because firework mm -hmm. season will be here before um, our next meeting mr. supervisor I just like to uh, add as well that um, all of the all the aspects of this request are in accordance with our current ordinances with the exception of the variance of the 20 by 40 10 much like the others Questions from the board. <coughs> Fourth one of these, more tools at our disposal in August. Mm -hmm. Item eight, uh, J, we have a re uh, motion by supervisor, support by. Motion by me, support by you. Motion, motion by Clerk Barry, support by supervisor Acovetti. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Trustee Anderson. No. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue? No. Trustee Vosberg? Aye. Treasurer LaFada? No. <coughs> Item 8K, approve a request to adopt resolution 2019-14 for a transfer of a Class C liquor license for Olive Garden Holdings, LLC, doing business as Olive Garden Italian Restaurant number 6420, located at 51364 Gratiot. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-14 as stated. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Discussion. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acovetti. Aye. Item 8L, approve a request by the Public Safety Department to purchase three full mountable radar traffic signs from Traffic Logix in the amount of $8,317.50. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Clerk Barry. Support. Support by Rusty Anderson. Director Kirsten, thanks Thank for being patient. Um, the, uh, Asking permission to purchase these portable speed signs that were placed strategically throughout the township. Um, I gave you an updated quote from the vendor that we had eventually selected to reflect the uh, uh, number of three. Also, there was a price improvement uh, because we uh, did select three from them. The total request now is uh, $8,191, which includes shipping. These signs uh, reflect driver speeds. They can be posted throughout the neighborhoods in some of the locations that we're having difficulty with uh, traffic complaints due to the <coughs> passes and detours uh, for the various projects that are underway on the uh, roadway now. Uh, good thing about these signs is they are portable. Um, they are uh, data reporting, so we will be able to determine the, not only the speeds of the vehicle, but at what specific time and in what specific area to uh, uh, place our enforcement cars. Trustee Anderson. Yeah, uh, Chief, I recall uh, the existing sign we have now that had to be, I'm trying to remember what year it was we back prior to 2010. Yeah, the radar trailer itself, was, that, that was a, uh, that, that's a pull behind unit. Right, it, uh, but there's been so many, I know through the years from our residents, there's been requests for that yes. in their neighborhoods, so definitely this is a, only yeah, question I have is your literature, is that 100, was that kilometers or miles per hour? <laughs> a little worried about that. Thank you. Bicycle speed. I have one in the trustee. Let's go. You sure? Go ahead. Okay. 
Uh, just, to, just to comment, um, this uh, is, is a good purchase, in my opinion, for a multitude of reasons, obviously the safety impact, but I know uh, previously um, the department has testified or you know, come to the board and indicated the uh, feedback that we get from residents when we put the trailer uh, you know, just in the subdivision. It is a, uh, a real passive deterrent and it really is quite effective. Um, it pays dividends, again, not only from the safety standpoint, but in uh, some of the residents that were here tonight on the special assessment district and the road, um, we have a number of roads, um, uh, one in particular uh, in my subdivision on Maurice. Whenever that uh, is graded or there's new stone put in, it encourages uh, more people leaving the sub and so it gets more traffic until the road is so beat down that it's not an effective way to, you know, get out of the sub. And uh, the, the complaint from the residents on the street is that the speed, uh, you know, adds to the degradation of the road. So uh, these are really uh, serve multiple purposes uh, from safety and just, um, you know, the, the use of the road and proper use of the road. So uh, thanks for bringing it forward. And are you sure three is enough? Are you sure that you have, you know, adequate I'll coverage with this? Uh, we're going to evaluate these. We're going to make sure that they function in the method that we would like to see them in yeah and if they do and they fit that model we will be back in front uh, I would like to, to at least double this request great thank you chief trustee to make great idea definitely cheaper than a radar trailer but there's only one question on yeah so you can attach it to a pole now we know somebody's not going to take it there there's security systems that come with it obviously theft is is uh, yeah. one of the concerns these are internet-based, and we will know, um, uh, we can monitor them live. Okay. So uh, that, that is something. I'm just thinking that, something small, so I'm going to get them myself. Once we put it in that stuff. Once we get those here, we will uh, we'll evaluate them. And again, if they work and they fit, obviously that being one of the concerns, we'll be back to ask for them. OK, thank you. Trustee Vosberg. Thank you, Mike. Questions and my accolades have been already stated. Any comments from the public? Mr. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to, uh, based on the updated information from Director Kirsten, like to amend my motion uh, to approve the request from the Public Safety Department to purchase three pole mountable radar traffic signs from Traffic Logics in the amount of $8,191 from GL number 205301740. Is there a continued support, Trustee Anderson? Continued support. Amend a motion by Clerk Barry to <coughs> support by Trustee Anderson. Any further discussion? Comments from the public. Clerk Barry, please call the roll. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domink. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer LaFada. Aye. Supervisor Acrobatic. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. There are no, no addendum at item number nine. Item number 10, public comment. Please limit your comments to <coughs> five minutes and state your name for the, uh, for the record. Going once for public comment. Any takers? Closed. Let's bring it up to the board. Trustee Anderson. Thank you. In 2016, retired Chesterfield Township Fire Department Lieutenant Murphy Shaw was able to raise $8,000 to help send 13 burn survivors to the Great Lakes Burn Camp. Retired Lieutenant Murphy Shaw has been involved with the Great Lakes Burn Camp for over 17 years. The dona donations raised, raised will help send children from 6 to 17 years of age to attend the uh, Great Lakes Burn Camp. The camp is a great place that provides a sense of acceptance and belonging to these young burn survivors and a place where they're able to just be kids. Retired Shaw would like to raise $8,000 or even better uh, than that amount this year. The last three uh, times she has shaved her head, uh, she's raised over 21,000. The cost to send one child to camp is $600 for the summer and $450 for winter camp. If you'd like more information about the uh, Great Lakes Burn Camp, you can do so by going to www.greatlakesburncamp.org. Uh, you can make checks payable to the Great Lakes Burn Camp. Uh, there'll be a yard sale at 46755 Sugarbush uh, Chesterfield. That's uh, just the south end of uh, Sugarbush, uh, just beyond the Sugarbush Tavern. Um, uh, well, we missed the one date, but also uh, June 6th, 7th, and 8th of this coming week from uh, 9 to 5. Donations will be accepted, and again, there'll be a raffling all, uh, 
uh, raffling a quilt and two pillows. The drawing will be August the 4th. So the proceeds will be donated to the Great Lakes Burn Camp. And that's what I have. Thank you, sir. Trustee Joseph. Thank you, uh, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, just uh, not to rehash the, uh, the debate we had tonight, but um, I think it's uh, always good um, when we have board members challenging other board members um, and uh, advocating strongly for a position that they believe, uh, you know, in their heart is what they signed up to do here. Um, Treasurer Lafada has consistently um, called for. Um, well, I'll let him make his case, but I, I, I respect and appreciate the uh, diligence he pays to a business plan and uh, his commitment to the township is really not in question. He's typically the first one here, oftentimes the last one to leave. He's here all day, every day, and uh, is entirely committed to uh, his office and uh, his um, request repeatedly on any project uh, on any expenditure, on any uh, thing that comes through his office, is that it must uh, contain the appropriate supporting documents. Uh, he's challenges. He's challenged invoices uh, from vendors, and later had vendors write letters withdrawing their request for compensation. He watches every nickel, and he does it on behalf of the residents of this township. So uh, I can tell you also, he's no politician. Uh, he doesn't often deliver things in a, uh, uh, a political way. He has zero interest in any other office. Uh, he didn't come here for a job. He's not looking for a job. In fact, he's retired and uh, was uh, recruited to come to the township, if you, if you want to know the truth. His, his uh, commitment here is, um, I think, uh, just exactly what you would want in a, uh, an elected official, a citizen legislator, a citizen who uh, could be enjoying his retirement, having coffee on the deck every morning and playing with his grandkids and traveling. Uh, he's here and he's committed and I respect him a great deal. Uh, so when he asked uh, for uh, some more documentation to lay out the plan, uh, I respect that. And um, to look at this particular project, um, we opted away from the, uh, we opted away from the, um, uh, seawall when this opportunity became available. Uh, but that wasn't the only option. Uh, there, there's a lot of residents that uh, if we were to have a town hall and you said what would you like to do with Brandenburg, I think the overwhelming support would be for a beach. And what would be the cost of that? And uh, would, we, would we look at a beach with a community center in that location? Which was another one of the uh, ideas that I think uh, you know we've seen sort of sketched out. There's a lot of things uh, that could be done. I don't know the cost of a seawall. I'm just a, uh, a ham and egger guy. I live in a lot that's, uh, that's landlocked. I don't have the water in my front yard. So unlike Trustee Domink and the supervisor, they know all about seawalls and the costs and so forth. But for a regular guy, uh, I, I don't have uh, an index on what it costs and whether or not it would be 300 or 500. I know this, if it's a dollar and it's your dollar, we have an obligation to take a look at how we spend it. So I, I, I applaud and commend Treasurer Lafada for being fearless in his advocacy for uh, residents. And uh, you know, again, he doesn't always deliver it in the most uh, politically savvy way because he's not a politician and he really isn't concerned about politics. Um, so thank you, Treasurer Lafada. The uh, the other issue that I wanted to talk about tonight is the uh, overwhelming uh, response. And I'm sure uh, Supervisor Acovetti, I saw uh, social media this weekend, he weighed in on this topic as well. And that has to do with our um, uh, waste, uh, our single waste hauler and the uh, inordinate amount of complaints about uh, not only uh, pickup schedules, uh, but uh, tags, cans that are tagged that are overweight, uh, an inability to get through to customer service. And um, it reached a pinnacle this last week uh, because m many residents, uh, most residents, I should say, um, had uh, you know rotting grass and clippings at the edge of their driveway for days on end, and no response from our single waste hauler. Um, the for me, um, I, I reached out. Uh, to the uh, supervisor's uh, assistant and I got an immediate email back with some details about uh, what the township had received from GFL 
in terms of uh, remedying the problem. Um, I noticed in a uh, notice uh, that the supervisor put out that he spent the day on Friday with a, uh, an account representative from GFL uh, driving around the township and explaining. And there was, um, again, I, if you're going to address it, I won't belabor it, but I thought there was a fairly extensive uh, post on social media about uh, what the contract was, how we arrived at the contract. There were some links to the state of the township where you would address this issue. And for me, the um, contract that we passed as a board, that, that contract passed five to two. I was not in favor of that contract, nor was Trustee Anderson. And there were several reasons that I was not in favor of the contract. Um, the one that keeps coming up the most is it, it contractually, if you do not purchase or lease the 96 gallon um, uh, waste can from GFL, by contract, you can provide your own, but it can only be 35 gallons. So uh, residents who have, and we've heard from them, who have cans that are larger uh, under the old contract, I think the, the policy was we'll pick up whatever you put out. We're getting an influx in these uh, um, green stickers that say overweight can, we're not dealing with that one. So you either have on the waste, uh, household waste, the lease or purchase their can, the 96 ga gallon can, or uh, you purchase and provide your own, but it cannot exceed 35 gallons. Uh, that's contractually outlined, and I don't know that we have much in the room of uh, renegotiating that at this point. The thing that we do, and, and where we're not being serviced properly, is the contract at the time it was discussed, we had a number of complaints, and uh, several board members I know at the time were receiving complaints. And I was uh, not satisfied that they were being addressed properly. And the QBS team within the contract, uh, under Section 15 of the contract, GFL is required to provide us with one full-time field supervisor and that the township shall have access to the field supervisor's cell phone number and email address for communication purposes. Uh, the individual that was identified most recently to me is not the same individual that was in the uh, original signing of the contract. And I don't know uh, how many changes there have been. Um, but the contract also requires that GFL provide us with at least one full-time customer service representative uh, who is in the office during all hours of operation and specifically that complaints are addressed within a 24-hour period. Uh, I've heard from a number of residents who attempt to call GFL and uh, the voicemail box dedicated to that line is full and they're not even able to leave a message. Um, further in the contract, under section 15, GFL is required to provide the township with a written monthly report uh, that addresses all of the uh, electronically received uh, phone calls or uh, complaints and the resolution action. Um, we're six months into this contract. I have not seen that monthly report, and I assure you that the call volume that I get um, certainly would, in my opinion, necessitate some feedback from GFL to the township. Uh, that GFL, in cooperation with the administrative staff of the township, will distribute periodic newsletters to the township. Uh, I could go on and on, but at the end of the day, uh, I think that what we have is uh, something that is contained in section 22 of the contract and that is specifically a failure to perform. Uh, I was prepared tonight uh, to announce that at the next board meeting I was bringing forward a motion uh, to uh, ask our township attorney to formally notify GFL that we are no longer interested in their services and will be seeking bids from outside providers. Uh, I did get a call today. Uh, from Mr. Joe Munum. Uh, Mr. Munum is the um, uh, Director of Government Affairs and Public Relations. Um, I shared with him, it was actually on my way to this board meeting, the concerns that I had and the concerns that I had received from residents in the township. Uh, Mr. Munum indicated that he um, has been experiencing uh, some problems, that GFL has been experiencing problems, not only in this township, but also in other communities that they serve, uh, specifically uh, Macomb Township, St. Clair Shores. And last night, Mr. Munum indicated that he was down at the Centerline uh, City Council meeting where he uh, presented to the board and took questions and, and uh, in, a, in a very apologetic way and was very straightforward and honest about the corrective action plan 
that GFL has for that community. Um, I asked Mr. Munum if he would uh, be willing to come to our township board meeting and do the same uh, because in my opinion the contract uh, is something that I would ask Mr. Siebert um, to, to weigh in on. Certainly I'm not the attorney but uh, in terms of the failure to perform aspects, I believe we have a number of, of uh, uh, argument worthy examples and the uh, obligation from GFL is to come in and explain uh, what the uh, problem is. Uh, they, they are contractually obligated to respond. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but they reference a force majeure in the contract, which is to say, what is it about uh, some unexpected uh, calamity that prevents them from providing the service. And we've heard about excessive rain and volume and all of these types of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, we can't have residents that uh, take these wet, soggy bags of grass to the edge of their driveway and it rots for five days. And the only thing we have is a uh, ride along with our supervisor. That's just not enough. And so uh, I would ask uh, the uh, board to receive Mr. Munum in two weeks. And if he is not able to satisfactorily address the performance failure in the contract, that we begin immediately to investigate steps to bring in another waste hauler and uh, exit this contract because of breach of service. Uh, again, um, I wasn't in favor of the contract to begin with. And as the complaints come in uh, and they're brought to the attention I hear and I saw it in the state of the township, this overwhelming pride in the QBS team and pride in this contract. And you know, that, that's great. And um, the proof is in the delivery of the service. So you can be proud of it all you want, but if residents don't have trash picked up for days and days and days, it's a performance failure. And that's not what they pay for. Uh, so I, I would like to see uh, some very tough questions answered by some high-level people. Mr. Munum has agreed to come in, and I'd like to take them up on that. And again, if it's not satisfactorily addressed, the direction that I would like to go is to leave this contract as a result of their failure to perform. Uh, so hopefully we can see what, uh, what's going on here in two weeks. Thank uh, you. No. Thank you. Uh, Trustee DeBank. Notes from the Parks and Rec Department. Deputy uh, Sundays and Sunshine was uh, last weekend, thanks to the Township Board for making this free family event possible. This is from uh, Director Willard. Um, visit our Township website for your thoughts about Chesterfield Township. It is working to define parks, existing conditions, examine service levels, identify needs, establish priorities, and to create a vision for the park system. Have your voice heard by taking the four minute master plan survey. Registration for the summer baseball and softball season has been extended through 4.30 on June 7th. Opening meetings remain in select leagues for 5 to 13 year olds. And contact Parks and Recs for the Pacifics. Uh, join us for Racing to the Drive-In on Thursday, June 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. at Stalls Automotive. It's a perfect chance for your family to come out and play together. A multi-generational event free of charge brought to you by Selfridge. Chesterfield Lions Club and the Macomb Self Storage. And it's time to plan ahead and spend a night with your family at Pollard Park. We're backpacking our way back to school during this late summer sleepover. Cost is $5 for residents, 10 for non residents for the Sunrise to Sunset Campout on Friday, August 23rd. S'mores, outdoor fun and games, breakfast provided for every camper. Children must be accompanied by an adult. Next, I'd like to congratulate Josh and his team for the Excellent job on the Marine Memorial, what he did, and the event that occurred two weeks ago. Uh, the amount of people that were here, the Marines, current, and honoring the fallen was just unbelievable. Uh, there was someone there who I recognized that I work with. I did not know he was part of that detachment. He thought it was a great presentation and a great place. But, uh, everyone who worked on that, kudos to you. You've done a great job. I'd also uh, like to add to what uh, Mr. Coddington said earlier. Uh, lake levels are rising. They have gone <coughs> last week. Uh, there's several places I've observed in the township uh, where it's low-lying areas, so people be prepared, especially if the winds 
had a lot of winds yesterday out of the southeast, and tonight they are prevailing out of the southwest. That's all I have. I'm done. Trustee Vosberg. Thank you. I would like to just follow up on the master plan for the Parks and Rec Department. To, to get to that, you go to the township website, click on departments, parks and recreation, and right there on the page, there, there's this picture with a daisy on, and you can um, take that survey. It's the more people that in the township that take that survey, the better the plan will be, because it will serve and suit um, your, your needs and your desires. Um, I too would like to thank um, the department, the uh, public works and, and all the people involved in that Marine Memorial and for the event that day. It, it was just stunning. And I was out there the night before, or the, a couple nights before, and I was so surprised the day of the event to see how finished it was. There was a lot of work that had to be done and a lot of people worked um, long hours. It was, it was a great event. And also, uh, this past weekend, the Historical Society held a, a timeline <coughs> of events from the French voyagers all the way through World War II. There were encampments out there. The rain, rainy weather didn't stop these um, hardy folk. And there were many people there, especially on Saturday in conjunction with they came to the ice cream event and then came over for that. It was just a great, I was just very proud of um, the events going on in Chesterfield Township over the past week and a half. Thank you. Treasurer Lafada. Um, I'd like to uh, agree with uh, Trustee Joseph. I personally have had issues with our trash hauler. Um, two weeks ago, they didn't pick up my trash. They went by it and left it. And then last week, uh, when they came by, they took my compost container and broke it in half and just left it in pieces. Uh, I, since we were having a trash day at the township, uh, I brought it, brought it to the township and uh, Don Beretta was there and he asked me what the problem was and I said, well, it seems like I call and I don't want to go through Jody. There's no sense in burdening our own people over issues. When I call, I don't get any better results and I don't tell them I'm the township treasurer for a reason, but I, I don't get any results myself. So. I just want to support what Mr. Joseph is saying. The only way to get anything done is actually get in somebody's face when it comes to time for a complaint. Um, also, uh, um, Mr. Joseph's right. Uh, I'm, I'm not a politician. Uh, I've been in this uh, office for two years and six months, and I'm finally realizing that the problems that I see in the township they're really not problems. The real problem is me. I'm the problem. It, whether it's following a purchase policy, managing an engineering project, executing a budget, there's always issues. We call these issues scope changes. We make excuses. There's never anybody responsible, and the township lacks both management and business acumen. This is no way to run a business, and I'm not a politician. I'm just telling you the way it is. Thank you. Clerk Barry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. A couple of things I'd like to update the board and the public on um, to expect over the next several months. Uh, first is you saw a little bit about, uh, of it this evening, and that is the ordinance recodification is coming finally to a head. We're finally getting ready to get that finalized. That's a process that should be taking place approximately every 10 years. Uh, Chesterfield's ordinances have not been recodified uh, for nearly twice that amount of time. And we've been working on it uh, for the better part of two years now. Um, it's a very large project. A lot is involved working with our township council. Uh, all of our department heads have been consulted as well. Uh, and I would like to recognize uh, Kevin Johnson from the DPW department whose presentation you saw tonight. Uh, I cannot think of a more textbook example of what that presentation should look like. So I'm just absolutely uh, thrilled there wasn't a stone left unturned there. I know he did an exhaustive amount of work on that and it showed. And I think that any board member, if you look at 
through the presentation, if there are any of those changes that you have concerns about, um, I believe that Kevin has addressed every single one of them, shown you the ordinance as it, was, it is in its current form, what the proposed changes are, and giving you explanations of why those, those things are. Uh, he's given you a table of, uh, essentially a uh, table and index to follow. Um, I can't think of it being laid out any better than it was. Kevin did an outstanding job. I can't uh, express to you uh, how thrilled I was to see it. And I would hope that any fr uh, future presentations uh, will be, uh, will use that model because uh, it was so well, so well done. And um, the reason why you're seeing this come to the board in pieces or to the public in pieces is because it is such a large ordinance, uh, the Department of Public Works Public Works actually has one of the largest portions of the ordinance and has the most amount of changes. So we wanted to kind of bring it in pieces so that the board members as well as the public has the opportunity to digest those things a piece at a time. Uh, all of the things uh, that are given to you in a presentation format will be brought back again for adoption. Again, we'll probably do those in pieces uh, for that same reason. So that they can be given their due attention and that everyone has the opportunity to fully vet them uh, before they are adopted and recodified again because this only happens every decade or so. Um, so that's the first thing that I'd like to let you know that there will be more of these coming and that's what to anticipate and I hope that that's what we'll see in terms of the presentations as we move forward. Secondly, um, precinct reorganization for election precincts. Chesterfield Township has had a considerable amount of growth since the last time our precincts were reorganized. Uh, we reduced our number of precincts uh, approximately six years ago, but we've had considerable growth since then. So what you're going to see, um, and we will be communicating with the affected voters multiple times um, and in many different, um, through many different mediums to make sure that we reach everyone but there will be some voters uh, who will be affected by precinct location changes. In addition to the changes due to uh, the Proposition 3 that was on the ballot in 2018, where everyone has now the ability to vote uh, by absentee ballot for, with no reason to be given, um, we will be making changes to some of the polling locations as well as some of the precinct numbers. So um, please look for that. Again, the clerk's department will be contacting those affected voters repeatedly through various mediums between now and the time of the presidential primary, which has been set for March of 2020. And we do not anticipate any changes to that date. Um, also, passports are still available at the clerk's office. Uh, we are, again, in the top 1% of all passport processing agencies. So please, if you know anyone who needs passports, if you need a passport for your summer travel, um, please come and see the clerk's department. We are a one-stop shop. You can obtain a new passport. You can apply for the passport card, the book, uh, passport photos are available. Um, any service uh, that you can think of related to passports is available through us. Passport uh, renewals are only done directly with the Department of State now, but we can certainly assist you with the proper paperwork to do that. We do not accept that paperwork that goes directly to the Department of State, but we can assist you with that as well. Lastly, there are three events that are coming up uh, you know, over the course of the next couple of months that I would like everyone to be aware of. Uh, first is our June 13th Women's Self-Defense event. That is completely booked. So I apologize for anyone who would like to get in on that. Uh, we already have people who are booking into our December um, Women's Self-Defense. There will be another self-defense class held in conjunction with our public safety um, department in December. Uh, you may start registering online for that as well. Uh, but our June 13th uh, program is completely booked. So. Um, Keep that in mind. Uh, those, again, they book up very, very quickly, so you'll want to make sure that you register far in advance for those. July the 11th, from 10 until 2, again, that's July the 11th, we will have a community shred day where the community uh, members of the public may bring your sensitive documents that you would like shredded. They will be shredded on site. Uh, from 10 until 2. You do not have to pre-register for that, but we would appreciate if you are planning to do that for planning purposes, that you go onto our website and register on Eventbrite. There is no cost for that. You do not have to be a township resident either. So that is available uh, to the public. We would like everyone to be able to take advantage of that to securely um, dispose of your uh, sensitive documents. Lastly, uh, and 
probably the one I'm the most excited about and to uh, bring to you is our Veterans Services Day. Uh, it's the first time that anything like this has been attempted uh, in Chesterfield and I think in Macomb County. This is on July the 18th from 2 until 5 here at the township offices. We will have Veterans Services administrators from the state of Michigan, the federal government, the VA hospital, uh, the county, as well as several uh, or a dozen or so other individuals who have uh, offerings for veterans and it is a one-stop shop for those for our veterans to be able to come to the township offices right here in their own backyard and be able to access all of those agencies that you normally have to travel all over the place to get to uh, you will be able to go and speak with all of those representatives who will make you aware of the benefits that you are entitled to and how to access them oftentimes what will happen is you will go say to the county and they will tell you oh that's a federal program or that's a state program you need to go and talk to them in this case they will be all here in this room you can literally walk from table to table instead of driving miles and miles away so um, it's a phenomenal opportunity please please let any veteran that you know they do not have to be a resident here um, any veteran <coughs> can come and take advantage of that Zucaro's will also be sponsoring a dinner as well that will be served approximately 430 so right at the end of the program um, that will be available to veterans and their guests as well uh, however that will only be available so long as supplies last so um, that is something to be aware of as well when that runs out it runs out but we appreciate Zucaro's coming in and providing that dinner uh, for our veterans and I'm very excited to bring that uh, program here to the township and to have developed it with our staff and the clerk's department if you have any questions about that or if you would like further information please call and contact the clerk's office we'd be happy to help you thank you thank you I'd like to start by sending my condolences and thoughts to the municipal employees in the city of Virginia Beach when when that news came out that a municipal office and they're just discussing if is it a general building like this one or is it a DPW um, that hit home for for all municipalities and I wanted to let them know that um, Chesterfield's thoughts and prayers are with that community um, I think we see a little bit of um, a little bit of dysfunction and boiling over here. Generally, we as a team, at least the three full-timers, and myself and Treasurer Lafada specifically, we get along very, very well, and we're in lockstep, lockstep on a lot of government philosophies. However, since day one when I walked in the door, where, where, the, where this kind of um, discord, which is not healthy, takes over is whenever we talk about infrastructure anything of the infrastructure going whether it's a water main project on 25 mile road the saw grant a sewer extension a road extension um, tonight the, the shoreline project the Weber paddle park which will be here in front of us again and again and again um, we just don't see eye to eye at all on infrastructure and we never will um, that's the 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 tough part for me is our relationship is so um, so destroyed on that that Thursday the agenda's out um, can we talk about this well no we can't talk about it what Friday can we talk about it today um, I, 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 can we talk about it no and then I get I get surprised at the meetings like here, here's a piece of paper you know what I mean like it, at some point we're gonna get to the point where we can at least have um, hopefully have cordial debates on how infrastructure is built maintained and moves forward in, in our in our community um, the motion to postpone for two weeks frankly we've 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 have been having the same debate for two years um and it's been on every single project that the township's been involved with it would have been on the war memorial wall but that that eight hundred thousand dollars was donated and managed through someone else it would have been on the jefferson road bridge project but it's done through the macomb county road commission because the process is the same um it would have been on uh, all the all the other jobs going on so the two weeks is not um not going to make a difference that vote tonight was on the Brandenburg uh, shoreline project was a very simple one um, either we run toward the eight hundred thousand dollar grant to restore that shoreline or I want participation for okay well make a motion to put a, put an agenda item together to scrap that grant and to, and to spend five hundred thousand dollars on a seawall to participate in the process another thing I heard here tonight that was very encouraging after um, years, frankly, of a lot of, lot, of, lot of fun gets made of me up here for my APOs. 
clear processes and procedures. A lot of fun gets made of me for my QBS teams, for how we select consultant vendors. Um, and I take it because I believe in that system. I mean, I think you're seeing it with, with, our, with our professional service vendors. I'm very encouraged that one of our biggest professional service vendors, which is our trash collection, single waste hauler, two, two million, they, they touch every resident three times a week. Um, that we're two years into this process of bringing, bringing it to the board in 18 and 17 and discussing in the, in the team, drafting that RFQ, analyzing the whole thing. And I finally got participation where the time to participate was two years ago, but now as we're continuing to improve and fix it, I look forward to the entire board having input in that. Yeah, containers, absolutely. There's, there's discussion, there's options that we have. We aren't locked into a whole lot of things here. And if you do actually watch the state of the township, you'll, you'll see it's not proud of that contract. It's frustration with that contract. But what I am proud of is the process. It's the first time that that vendor was procured with integrity since 2005 mm -hmm. without an extension with no bids. That was the, the part that I was very proud of. I was very proud of the team for getting us this far. And I'm also very proud of the process because it allows con constant improvement. We're not gonna sit on our hands for, for a year. And I think if you watch the little tiny blurb in the state of the township, you'll see that. Um, lots of good options and I'm just I'm really happy because we're better as a team um, it, with myself and trustee Vosberg and trustee uh, with with two of us say and, and come up here to get to get to get blindsided we're, we're stronger as a team well hey what about um, what about a container option for compost what about a, a, a match program like Sinclair Shores has what about a recycling center um, but we all have to participate, and it starts with communication. I think I can communicate with, with most people on this board, so long as um, you know, we don't really talk about the details of infrastructure, we're in pretty good shape. Our next meeting is June 18th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? <coughs> motion by Trustee Busberg, support by Clerk Berry to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by saying nay. We are adjourned at 9.